Hey guys, I'm gonna start streaming or painting. I'm already streaming, I guess. And what I thought I could do in this live stream is I have this palette and I have made this in Procreate Pocket, like I said in my last video. And I thought that maybe I could like fine tune this. And somebody was asking me in the last live stream that if I could post my palette it, for everybody to see before the live stream happens and then we could paint maybe together with the same palette. So this might be a palette that we could do that but I first need to make it. So I just did the palette on Procreate Pocket and I'm gonna set the music a little bit quieter for my headphones so I can hear myself. So I made the palette already, but I haven't done anything with this palette yet. It's quite light, so I have a hunch that I might need to make some of those colors a bit like um, duller. Because if I have like those sort of like high saturation colors, then like for example this would probably be a better way to do that color. Which was it again? Was it this one? No. Okay, I'm gonna try to make sense of all of this. And I need to like dig out my chat because it's somewhere hidden behind all of these windows. I'm not 100% sure, but like sometimes I get these messages that I shouldn't cover up some parts of the window when OBS is open. I don't know exactly what it means, like it wants one of the windows to be a priority. So which one is a mystery. Hey guys, also sorry again that I wasn't able to announce when this chat is happening. I've been running around all day today because of Vivi and because of camera equipment stuff. It's a whole lot of things. This thing that is like blasting light into my face from the right, it has like five different components, including like one just screw that I went in and got from a nearby place so that I could attach the lamp into this boom arm. And even the power cord had to be bought separately, and it's not a normal power cord, it is a um, converter system. <laughs> so, <laughs> I never thought that I would be able to do any of this technical stuff, but apparently, when there's nobody else that you can ask for help, then life will find a way. Okay. I was thinking to go live, but I didn't because. Uh, I didn't have 1k subs. Yeah, I think that came uh, during the time that I've been on YouTube. So it's quite a new rule. Also, I think they have a separate rule for when you can use, for example, the phone to do live streaming. Because uh, apparently YouTube was flooded with all of these like um, app gamer streams. And apparently they didn't like that. So. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I can imagine that like we don't know what is happening on the platform because there are so many videos being uploaded all the time and literally if you are browsing YouTube you are only seeing like the top 2% of the content that is out there because everything else, even if it's the exact keywords that you are typing into the search bar, it just won't be shown if that channel doesn't have enough uh, traffic. So how do you get traffic when you are not getting suggested? That, <laughs> that is the problem and I guess that's why a lot of people quit before they reach 1000 subscribers. I know that to me it seemed like that is never gonna happen. But I guess if you just keep consistent and keep doing your thing. 
eventually it will get easier, I guess. Hello, Hunter. Thick boys. <laughs> I've noticed when I've been forcing myself to listen to these live streams that I sometimes go really quiet, but I'm not gonna take all of the blame because this microphone is also very sensitive to the distance, so I can't be speaking like into the microphone either in a comfortable position unless I get another boom arm and manage to somehow like get it closer to my face, but boom arms are expensive. And this took me three weeks to get delivered here. I guess because of the current world situation, a lot of the deliveries are extra long, especially for audio and video equipment, because so much of it comes from China and all of those shipments are on hold. I know when I was uh, looking into this lamp, there was one lamp that I wanted to get, one that has barn doors, but the guy just said to me at the store that like it will take months for another shipment to come from China, so take one of these that we already have, they're good enough. <laughs> and then I just came, because I thought I don't want to wait months for a lamp. That is not even the key light. And do you tend to use more of a warm color palette or cold? Uh, someone asks. I guess I like warm colors. They just make me feel happier. I'm not opposed to like cold colors, but it just tends to affect the whole style that I do. Like for example, when I do like dark fantasy pictures or science fiction, then I like to use cold colors. It just depends on what I'm making, really. But I guess I like... If I had to pick one, if I couldn't use cold or warm colors for the rest of my life... I guess I would be choosing warm colors. And by warm colors, I mean warm light. I mean, like, if I use warm colors, there's always cold colors. And if I use cold colors, there are always uh, warm shadows. So, I just assume that you mean light. Somebody's asking about my Instagram. My Instagram is Angramiko. That has been going on for a lot longer than this YouTube channel. I really like Instagram as a platform. <laughs> Despite all the spam stuff that comes with it. It's still one of my favorites. I guess because I'm so used to it. But there's something to the... Just the whole process of making a post that it doesn't take the entire week. It used to be a lot quicker to me, but like now when I make an Instagram post, I have like it already planned. I have written the caption probably three different times and I have done my hashtag research and then I need to have like a full hour to sit down when I make a post to 
just be ready for it. And I never post anything on Instagram before going to sleep. That I have learned the hard way that it's not good for me. By the way, this brush is a Polar's ice cream truck, if anybody is wondering. I think these are a bit too light blues, so I'm gonna take out this one and then set it a bit darker so that I have a bit more space to move with it. And same thing for this. And a bit greener. I like green skies for some reason. It's not really darker though. seems much more doable. One more tweak. Okay, <laughs> that's the sky colors. Somebody is asking if I'm painting a landscape. I think I'm painting a box. Not sure yet. Pretty sure. Maybe someday people will realize that I have no idea what I'm doing most of the time. I think there's just something fun just starting to paint and then figuring it out as I go. I guess for most people it's not that much fun to figure it out when other people are watching and expecting you to make something worth watching. <laughs> But I try not to think about that. And I keep all the rights to like fail miserably. By the way, sorry if my voice is still a bit weird. Uh, it was a long blue, but I'm still not 100% recovered. But I just thought that I can't keep not doing work. And I feel fine, it's just my throat sometimes feels weird. Random, but some of your art reminds me of Chrono Cross. I haven't played Chrono Cross itself, but like this is the best reference pretty much so far that people have made on these streams about my art because my whole basically art career and hobby has been greatly inspired by 90s video games, specifically uh, that like golden era of Squaresoft games and the art of those games. Not animation movies like a lot of people think. But that's a old that's an old reference to like no Chrono Cross at all. 
I guess like Chrono Trigger would be more accurate because Chrono Cross wasn't. Am I? No. Chrono Cross is the one that happened on PlayStation, right? And Trigger is the one that has art by Akira Toriyama, and I don't like Akira Toriyama <laughs> at all. I've never bought any of those games, like Dragon Quests and stuff, because there's just something about, especially the line uh, consistency is something that I, I really don't like, the character designs. I mean, it's probably great for a lot of people, and He's like one of the most loved artists in Japan, and I can appreciate that, but it's just not for me. I'm doing this blocking before I'm adding the perspective lines because I can fix all of the perspective stuff uh, when I get to that but I just need to know that I have enough space for the elements that I want to have in the image first before like starting to nail down the perspective stuff. Because otherwise that will affect the whole composition and the idea phase of the image and at, at this point I just want to keep myself uh, free from those sort of concerns. It's too early. It looks like a tropical beach with a palm on palm front, palm front hut cozy. I'm not sure what front means. What iPad do you have? A uh, 12 inch one. What are you drawing? No idea. Also, I'm not drawing. This is painting. Uh, few videos ago somebody left me a comment in like completely in a rage mode that like stop calling your paintings paintings you're not painting yeah this is painting <laughs> i just thought it was so funny because that person was so mad for some reason also everybody's free to make their own uh definitions of things but for me drawing is when i have like i could use the same brush for drawing if i make like for example line art and that way figure out the shape of this thing that to me is drawing what i'm doing right now though is painting and then there's the third thing that i can't put up good name on and that is my previous video that has the free wallpaper that i made for everybody on twitter uh, that to me would just be like design or just illustration it just seems like it's more design work than drawing or painting but that's how i see it and i'm not trying to push these terms to anybody but i will keep calling this painting because it's painting And if that pushes your buttons, I'm sorry, but I just find it a bit funny.
there are so many <laughs> more <laughs> important things in the world. I think this screen should be a bit bluer or duller because it's so saturated and dark. There's just like no movement space for it. I can make that tweak to it. And then, oh crap. Yeah, that looks better. It's not quite. Okay. This I can work with. Should I start putting some perspective lines already? Nine PM here. <laughs> Leave me a comment when you rewatch it. Oh. I'm sorry about the timing. It's eleven PM here, by the way, if anyone cares. Okay, I'm gonna add the perspective lines now. Uh drawing guide, yes, edit. I hate it that you have to Put the drawing guide on before you get to edit it. I think that is a completely uh, nonsensical, nonsensical button press. I want to have some perspective to this. I can't see any of these lines, so I need to put them a bit thicker. Usually I try to keep horizon horizontal, when it just makes sense for the image. that I'm doing by looking at the very faint grid behind. So since this is looking from above, I'm gonna add the third vanishing point below for the box. And I think this can be a bit more drastic to make the field of view seem really large. Field of view just makes it, uh, determines how big this box basically is or what type of lens we are looking through. I think this might be like really drastic, but would be fun. I'm gonna keep it. And then put the thickness down because that's going to distract me. And lower opacity. I'm gonna do assisted drawing and this seems to be off. Okay, done. Are you sometimes using color balance? What is that? This? Yeah, but not that often. I think it's a bit... Uh, not enough control for color editing, but sometimes... I use curves more. Okay. Let's get this blocking done for the box. This is really drastic.
I think I will like that negative space because I can use it for some sort of like pieces that come out from this box. Not exactly sure what that is. I'm gonna make this uh, eraser be the same Polaris, Polaris ice cream truck. Just to keep the textures consistent. I don't wanna have like multiple brush shapes in the same painting. Okay, that's the box. I think this is uh, workable. Not sure it goes back enough. The reason for this like late hour live stream is that Bibi is sleeping or at least appears to be more relaxed now. We had an exciting day. I took her to the shopping mall for the first time ever. I was carrying her the entire time just so that she gets used to seeing people. I just finished sketching an absolute new piece. Uh, I don't like you talking about yourself that way. Mikko, how is the puppy? Uh, she's tired. I think it's interesting that she seems way more stressed or starts barking more easily when just one cyclist or a person comes across us during a normal walk but when we were in the shopping mall and I put her on the ground she was completely quiet and didn't even seem that scared and then she was walking fine like in a situation where there's just like one person around she seems very <laughs> aggressive. A lot of dog training. We have a dog trainer coming tomorrow. She's been really helpful. Have you seen what the next update brings? No. I saw some of the glitch effect stuff. And somebody mentioned that there's going to be gradient maps. Which I guess is good for those people who start their, their paintings in black and white. For me, gradient maps aren't really that important. But the alignment tools, like, that I can get excited about. Especially for all the text stuff. I hope that applies to just layers. Like normal snap snapping.
Vivi is my dog's name. And if you heard what I said earlier about my influences, that's also the reason why she's called Vivi. For these two shadows, I think I need to have two different shadow colors. Maybe one for the outside. And one for the inside. Do you use a screen cover, like paper-like? No.
sometimes it can be tricky to try to do character design and think about the whole composition and the live chat at the same time. But I think if I never just give myself a permission to just focus on the painting sometime, these won't just be finished ever. <laughs> and I won't enjoy doing live streams. I can't focus on the painting every now and then. Do you use references? Uh, Kailani Knight asks. Yes, I do. All the time. And I will. I will. <laughs> In the future. Whenever I need reference, I will use one. And it's not my goal to get out of using references. Because there will always be new things that I'm painting and drawing and I'm going to need references for those but if I had painted the same thing so many times that reference kind of like doesn't add that much then it's not always worth the effort of finding one but if you can go through the trouble of finding or making yourself proper reference it's always always better I think the box needs uh, more interesting shapes on the top as well, not just the sides. So I'm gonna make this one chair type of thingy. Put the one on the edge. Be careful with tangents here. The blotchy grass areas are gonna make uh, the differences between the two areas more apparent later, but I kind of like this kind of like blown out 
super saturated green, so I'm gonna try to keep it. And try to soften this sky with a Gaussian blur. And make sure that this is also set to Polar's ice cream track brush. Do you have any tips on how to stick to a piece until it's finished? I always seem to abandon them halfway through. I made a whole video about this quite recently. I don't know if I can say that any better, but I do think that you should finish and if you press me on that fact that like there's just nothing but tough love on this because I don't much appreciate art that is kind of like fun to start and then you don't finish. I think you are doing all of us a disservice by not finishing your art. So <laughs> go and finish your stuff. You probably have like these half finished paintings in your gallery. Like on those like Sunday evenings when you feel anxiety that like, oh, the week is going to start and I didn't finish anything. Pick one of those paintings and like finish it. It won't take as much time. And also if it's a painting that you already kind of like gave up on, which by the way, I don't approve, you can do like any wild crazy things to it and see if you can somehow like make it work. Just completely change huge areas of it. Because then you don't have to be afraid that you are going to destroy it, because you weren't going to finish it anyway, so you have nothing to lose. I'm gonna edit the drawing guide because I'm gonna see if I can do a ring that gives perspective to these clouds. I have a weird idea. I don't know if it's going to work. But this is basically uh, a circle. And now I'm gonna take transform tool, reform and then set the transform controls to points in this grid. I'm gonna try and follow the same lines. And then this area in the middle. And then I'm just gonna guess that it's around here because I'm following both of those lines already. Okay, now that it's set to grid, I can move this around without worrying about positioning. wonder if it's um, the same distances around the whole thing. Maybe I could do another ring later, but this could be a good place to start. Since it's just a guide, I'm gonna set it to lower opacity so I can see what I'm doing here. Actually, let's just get rid of all of those.
So I'm letting these clouds kind of like vaguely follow this path. Which will hopefully give the whole sky a bit more like perspective. this entire box in the sky. Now, somebody was asking me last stream that can you say that the moment when you see that what you're doing, I think now I know what I'm doing. Up until this point it was just, I don't know. <laughs> How do you use time efficiently? Well, we've been here for 40 minutes already, so I guess I'm not qualified to answer that question. I'm gonna leave the ring on for now, just in case I need it. Okay, let's get back to the green areas, I think, yes. These are kind of too close to each other, these greens. But maybe they have purpose of some kind. I don't know. What was this other green thing? Yeah, I'm gonna need to figure this out. I feel like this is a secret sky meeting of forest spirits and they are arguing about what to do with those pesky humans that are making a camp in their forest. <laughs> That's a good story. Who knows, maybe. Maybe this is a, kind of like an ancient Rubik's cube that controls the weather. And they are thinking of maybe using it against somebody. When did you start with drawing and digital art? And what tips do you have for someone that's just starting as a hobby and maybe as a future profession? Um, are you prepared to 
paint consistently for seven years, <laughs> I mean, that is probably something that you should commit to if you want to make it a profession someday. But as a hobby, like, I think as a hobby it's great for everybody. I think it can sometimes turn on those people that want to turn it into a profession immediately and they get frustrated with just how long it takes to learn all the, the technical stuff. And I guess that's one of the reasons why this channel exists. Because I wanted to help people with not just the technical stuff, but with the frustration part. Because it's a very real thing, because it's probably the reason why most people quit. is the frustration and the lack of knowledge on like how to handle yourself with your art. Because that's a whole thing that requires a lot of like self-awareness patience and forgiveness and just self-care you are going to have to like actively take care of yourself if you want to be an artist and not just i'm not just saying that that takes up a lot of my time during the week making sure that i'm okay Did you watch Lightbox? No. Today I've been just running around with this technical stuff because of this YouTube channel. So it was the first time that I have left the house for more than an hour. I think it was an hour and 30 minutes me to be away because I need to kind of space out the time that I leave Vivi alone so that she learns that I will always come back. I can't just suddenly be away for six hours and let her figure out <laughs> what is going on. So I've had these timers every time I leave the front door I make sure that I come back so that there hasn't been enough, uh, so much time past that it's only like a minute or two longer than the previous time and even on days when I don't need to leave anywhere I will just like go outside for 40 minutes because it's part of the training to get her used to the fact that I'm not going to always be here. When I had a new fallen dog, uh, he had a lot of separation anxiety and new fallen dogs are huge dogs. And you can imagine that in a block of flats the howling was not appreciated by my neighbors. <laughs> so I take this so I take this seriously.
I'm afraid I really have to go to bed since it's 10 p.m. here. Okay, <laughs> have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm late to the party. What are you painting? A box in the sky. That's probably not a sufficient explanation, but it's the one that makes sense for the situation. I think maybe an extra view of lightness would be good for this. Let me keep it cold. Because there are like so warm tones on the box itself. I think because of this um, kind of like muddy dark tone, I can use the lighten layer later to add more vibrancy and hue and atmospheric perspective to these characters. So it might look kind of like dull now, but the reason why these colors are kind of like muted is because they will give me editing room later when I get to that phase. But I usually do all of my color editing of like live stream paintings after the live stream, maybe next morning, so that I have a bit of like time in between sessions so I can see the piece with fresh eyes. Feet dangling over the edge. I'm so short, I know how that guy feels. I'm short too, I'm really short. I'm what they call in scientific terms a pocket gay. Also I have developed this like freakish ability that when I see a grid of like people's picture, head pictures, I can tell from the head to shoulders ratio if that's a tall or short person pretty easily. Now that I have upgraded all of like the gear for streaming, maybe the next thing should be the chair. Because honestly, every time the chair is over and I get up from this thing, it's just like 
unbelievably painful. <laughs> I'm completely stuck in this position after I'm done painting. Do you think music can influence your mood? Definitely, always. <laughs> I don't think I could paint without music. It's a uh, necessary fuel for me to work. I'm trying to move my feet so that I don't touch all the cords, like literally hanging everywhere from this table. Whenever I'm not listening to a podcast or an audiobook, I listen to music and I have my headphones. Well, I shouldn't say my headphones because I stole these from my boyfriend from his piano, <laughs> which I'm not supposed to use these, but these are the only ones with a cord and I can stream with wireless because OBS doesn't allow for that. Anyway, so I have headphones on all the time and Mostly there's music, and I can't go on a run without music. Except if I'm listening to a um, good running podcast, which is uh, one of my favorite uh, podcasts. Marathon Training Academy, I think that's a really good show. Wow, I painted on the wrong layer, I hate it when that happens. The reason why I wanted to use this sort of like overexposed, super saturated um, green for the grass, or moss, I don't know which this is, is because uh, I was just thinking about um, the outdoor scenes in Eco. It's a PlayStation 2 game. Um, and that game really captures the sort of like overexposed photographic e effect of grass outdoors when a camera is kind of like not good enough to capture all the sort of like different nuances of use. And then just have this like huge flood of green.
Does your boyfriend play music for you in the evenings? No. <laughs> He's not as much of a music person as I am. And I listen to a lot of music that I use for this channel. I mean, that's most of my music listening these days. It's just like trying to find songs that would fit a video. Because it's not just the music that I listen on these streams and in my videos. Like there are like thousands and thousands of tracks that I didn't like and I didn't end up using in the channel. So I have to go through all of those. Hey Flink Bag. Good morning. Anyone else feel like their paintings always get to that ugly stage first that makes you wanna quit it? And then you get over it and starts looking okay. That's probably like everybody. <laughs> it feels like you're like climbing a hill. And then when you kind of like get to the other side, to the downhill part, it feels like the painting can't go on long enough then it starts feeling like it's so enjoyable to paint that you never want to stop. I've made my decisions, so I wanted to have a bit more resolution. I was seeing pixels a bit too often when I was zooming in, so that's a sign that I need to increase the resolution. And probably start flattening layers, because this is not gonna go anywhere, this sort of multiple layer stuff. It's only when I'm trying like new elements, like these trees or bushes. What time is it there? Um, Flink bag, it's um, midnight in three minutes.
I'm gonna try to find a style to use for these brush strokes that uh, kind of gives these like foliage elements this sort of like round and fluffy style. Haven't done it before, so it's just something that I need to try to see if I can make it work. I'm glad that it's 5 p.m. somewhere, <laughs> so that the chat time or the live stream time isn't terrible, terrible for everybody. I'm not sure if I like this uh, third guy in the back, so... I might use that as an opportunity to like show the cube shape of the island, otherwise he would be blocking it. hair people. <laughs> you should just wear a cap. Gets rid of the whole problem. To it later, but I want to make this um, circle shape the same way that I did the clouds because it's pretty important to get in the right orientation because the main lines for this whole thing are so easy to see that these are just like one of those perspective lines that I need to get right. edges of the box because those are more relevant than the perspective grid itself. Thank you. 
And now that it's uh, its own separate layer, I can use alpha lock and just lock in some like vague reflection elements. I think these boxes are going to take a lot of time. Maybe I could just prioritize like getting them into the right place and do this sort of like polishing stuff later. Because that will probably be very boring to watch. This is probably why I should plan these paintings beforehand. I don't know. It's kind of exciting to start these streams without knowing where it's going. And then just worry about the time stuff later. I can always change my plans. I think if I had more of a system for these live streams... On one hand it might be good, but then again... It might limit the type of ideas that I can come up with. And I think that to me is like one of the most exciting things. Just seeing where it goes. This uh, orange seems okay, but I'm gonna put it a little bit more desaturated in the palette, just so that it has a bit more contrast with that um, bright green. And for those who weren't here in the beginning of the chat, I'm also doing a palette right now, so this is a palette that I can maybe share later. I will probably do it on my Instagram feed in my stories so that before the next live stream I can share the palette and then if anybody wants to use the same palette during the live stream and paint with me with the same colors they can do that. And this is an idea that you guys came up with so <laughs> I think that was a cool idea cool enough to actually do it.
I think these like details in the distance, I can just do something like suggestive. It's not going to really add anything to the message if the perspective is like super detailed, like in this section, when we zoom out, I think the opposite is true. If I make that like super precise there, then it will be distracting. But I will polish like uh, these like bigger chunks after the stream, just for uh, time limitation reasons. I think that was the dif most difficult thing about the gear stuff, like pretty much everything for video when you plan to have like equipment for any type of video production that you require more than 30 minutes of use time, then the prices go up like exponentially. A lamp that might otherwise cost you only like 15 euros, it's suddenly like 500 because you don't want it to like burn your face off or shut down after 30 minutes because of overheating. It's pretty crazy. I'm assuming on Insta you just screenshot the palette, then use the color picker to drop the colors into new palette in Procreate. Yes. I hope that this is not too much work for you guys. I mean, you don't have to do it. It's optional. <laughs> but I think with a palette you can get uh, a lot more use out of uh, colors than just color picking an existing painting. Because when I'm done with this, I will do the color editing and that will push all of the colors to their extremes. That's why there are these sort of like muted tones in everything so that I will have that editing room. And when I have done the edit, when somebody like just sees my painting and color picks it, you are already painted into a corner because you have nowhere to go with those colors. So no wonder that you might feel frustrated with the end result because I wasn't working with those colors. I was working with the ones that gave me that editing room in the end. Okay, I gotta ask, how do you highlight the username? Please somebody answer this because I just did it wrong last night in a live stream where I tried to do that and... I got it wrong, especially if a username has a space. Are you supposed to do a lower case? I don't know, underline or something? Because the name that I tried to type had a space in between and it didn't do the highlighting stuff. Somebody went crazy with the <laughs> color palettes. I think those are really fun to do, especially on the phone, because uh, this color palette that I was making, I remember that I was making it uh, on an escalator at one point. I was walking and I was like doing this color palette on the phone and it's just so cool that you can save up so much time by just using the phone and throwing them here.
I'm gonna now put the drawing guide into lower opacity so that it won't affect my color choices. At least too much. This message has been uh, defined uh, as to be held under the review, and I will show it right now. <laughs> I named my skin tone palette Send Nudes and got a ton of IG followers for it. <laughs> That's good marketing. <laughs> I like this track. And so the problem with good music is that I don't want to talk over it. keep the painting upside down for a bit to make sure that I block in these grass areas with some purpose. Yeah. 
is a bit too slow of music for me. Is your only job being a freelancer right now? Yes. How did you get to this stage? By being fired. <laughs> Mikko, I know you don't like being given suggestions. No, I don't. Is it just me that prefers audiobooks while painting? Only music is sort of boring for me. Might be some sort of ADHD thing. Hmm. I think I need to concentrate when I'm listening to an audiobook. I guess that depends on the book. I don't listen to a lot of like fiction books. Except like maybe one of my favorite audiobooks is uh, a fiction book. And it's Virginia Woolf's um, Miss Dalloway. I've listened to that book like a hundred times already. But I guess you don't really need to concentrate on it. That much. I didn't know that Harry Potters are already as audiobooks. I thought that the writer had some sort of a thing of not doing audiobooks because they were already popular and took so long for the audio versions to come out. By the way, I don't mind when like clients give me ideas of what to paint uh, because it's mostly just like 100% a list of things that like a client wants into a picture and in most of the cases, unfortunately, that is a huge list. So the artist's job is basically just like trying to figure out a way how to squeeze everything in in a way that the picture still makes sense for other people except 
that person who is like doing the commission because it's usually to sell a product so I'm trying to figure out what it is that they want to communicate and what is their like goal with this uh, illustration that what, what do they want to communicate and feel what is the action that they want their um, customers to take after seeing the picture and I think that's also really important to understand because um, this sort of like laundry list of like things that need to be in a picture it's usually kind of like uh, not helping that much if you want a piece to have visual impact. And then I just do sketches and if the client approves them then I will do the finished piece according to the sketch. But after that I don't uh, do endless changes. Like of course like after the sketch there are things that like a lot of things can be tweaked, tweaked, but like major elements, like um, I don't change them for free because if it changes the whole composition of a piece, then like it will cost me money to work like that. So I don't. Did you already plan on freelancing? Yes. <laughs> this has been a big escape in the works for a really long time. Um, when I decided to stop making uh, video games, I felt like I had like no online presence at all and I was quite, quite unsure of like if I could get a job at all because I had like no feedback on like what people thought about my art anymore at that phase because it had been so long since I had been active online so I had this like very concrete plan that like if I get a job I want to get a just a job I don't want to have like a, a dream job anymore because like the game job that was a dream job for me for a really long time for many years so I wanted to have just like a graphic design gig and then I would start shoveling my escape route right away and that's why I've been so active on Instagram and like painting like my life depends on it <laughs> for years. So if I hadn't done that work I would basically have nothing right now and I would have just gotten another job but the um, exit package was so good that now I had this kind of like a choice that like can I make this work or like get another job and I thought that these opportunities when I get this sort of like time that I have money to work on my own stuff I'm not going to waste it because I, who knows, I might not get another opportunity. Life is really, really short. I don't want to waste it. I know that nobody is going to come and give me a permission to try to do my own things. I'm gonna have to try it on my own without anyone's permission.
Hello Mikko, don't you think it would be better if you say when you're going to go live? Yeah, well, I can't know when Vivi's not exploding into a full-blown dognado. I mean, it would be ideal. If I could, I, I definitely would do a countdown or something on Instagram. I think that would be ideal. But life just hasn't given me opportunities to like have that much uh, time to know when I have the opportunity to go live. So it just happens whenever I can go live. Sorry, I know that it's not ideal. Definitely later. She's not going to be a puppy forever. It's hard to explain, but she has these freakouts, and they happen at uh, a specific time. For example, after she has had a nap, and then we go out for a walk, and then we come back inside, and then we're here for a little bit, I might like try to train her some tricks, and then she will get tired, and then she has this sort of like uh, freakout, like kind of like little kids do when they are feeling tired and they can't handle the tiredness so she has a full-blown dognado breakout and that usually lasts about 30 minutes and then she's unconscious and then sleeps more and this continues throughout the day it's amazing <laughs> Is there a difference between a matte and a paper-like screen protector? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I don't use screen protectors, but like paper-like is just matte plastic sheet that is expensive. I think there are so many things that like get sold to digital artists that are just stuff that don't actually help at all. Like for example these painting gloves which I think are the most ridiculous thing that I can think of. Whenever I see somebody putting on like a painting glove, I don't know. <laughs> a little bit of my soul dies every time I see that. I have watched this like one um, Brad Colbo uh, review of a drawing tablet from a company that also tried to contact me. I just <laughs> didn't make a deal with them. Anyway, in that review, he has this like glove dance, and I have watched the same review of this crap tablet because of that <laughs> glove dance many times because I think it perfectly encapsulate how, encapsulates how I feel about drawing gloves.
<laughs> Ending with gloves sounds a bit pretentious, but I've never seen them. Um, Sheona says, I agree. But if there is a painting cape thing, if, if it becomes a thing, I will start wearing one. Like the saturation levels of these two different blocks are completely reversed. This thing in the distance should be less saturated, like this. And the one in the foreground more saturated. Same for these. Gloves make sense when you work with graphite or oil. I have never been in a life drawing class where I have gloves on, or have I ever seen anybody else wearing gloves. Nor have I ever painted with oils and had gloves on, nor have I seen people paint with oils, and I was in a traditional art school that was based on oil painting alone, so nobody wore gloves ever. That's not a thing. I would... I'm pretty confident to say that that's not a thing that people do in general. I like the way that this sort of like uh, shadow interacts with the mossy, grassy areas. take out one of these grays. What is the pink for? I have no idea. Ah, I can't decide. I take out this one. And then I'm gonna slide it into place. I like to have like some sort of like organization with the colors.
I decided that if I'm going to guess like uh, where the line is going, I'm just going to fail. So I drew it as a straight line. And, and now I'm using a razor to like break up these sort of like distant parts. Random question, but is there a specific reason you use light mode on Procreate? Most people I see use night mode. Um, the reason is uh, the way I paint values. I tend to paint um, quite dark, so if I have the darker frame for the whole painting, then the dark frame will make all of my colors seem brighter than they actually are. So my paintings tend to like go on the darker side. So just having like a reference point that actually helps me um, estimate the co colors a bit better. But even still, like uh, I will have to put the image into context to see uh, what I do with the final edits. And that usually means that once I see it uh, on my phone next to other images, then I can kind of like estimate if it's uh, too dark, bright, saturated, whatever in tone. But having the light background like gets me closer to a good guess. Somebody is saying that uh, acrylics felt uh, more difficult than oils. Well, if you feel that way, I think it's probably nothing is lost there, since the end result with uh, oils is usually the colors just are better. They are. You can't get to the same hues with um, acrylics. But if you just take a photograph, you probably won't be able to see the difference. But when you physically see an acrylic painting that is the exact same painting next to an oil painting, if the oil painting is painted right, meaning that there is volume in the paint, paint strokes, not just like thin layer of like rubbed into the canvas, which kills the color. But if it's like painted right, then the oil painting will be more vibrant and just have more depth into the colors. I, compared to pretty much any other medium. My art teachers were very strict that like when you're painting, 
with oils into the canvas, you shouldn't like start smushing the brush against the canvas until you run out of paint because then you're killing the color and now I can like physically see that the color has been killed on a painting. But they would just like walk by and say like you're killing the color and then you realize that like you're painting in an insecure way. I like my art teachers very much. I mean, they are now something that I always compare all other art teachers to. That I've had so many art teachers, but the ones that were in the art school, like, they were so much better than anything else. I think when you have a bad art teacher, it can actually do you more harm than good, so those are important differences. Especially when you're in a phase when you're just like growing your art skills. I recommend getting a teacher that you actually respect and that has the results that you want to have. There's still some like um, leftover bad resolution edges here, and since it's like a character edge, I wanted that to be more crisp. It's nice to see you, Mikko. Hey. <laughs> Facebook art communities are notorious for giving terrible art advice. Uh, I was just thinking today that like, should I? <laughs> go back to Facebook and maybe like make an artist page there but I haven't used like personally Facebook for the entire year and I really haven't missed it there's just something about that platform that I don't know makes me feel bad it makes me feel bad about myself and I don't like that so I stopped But it might be a good idea for business reasons to just have that other way for people to reach me to, I don't know. I kind of have to more monitor my energy levels. You're just being on Instagram and YouTube, that's already a lot.
you're not missing anything by not using Facebook. Uh, somebody's saying... When I'm saying somebody, it's a username that I'm too scared to try to pronounce. <laughs> Uh, Foxy is saying, make a Patreon or start your own blog. Facebook is dead. Nobody I know uses it anymore except some people over 50. Hey, some people over 50 might still want to paint and enjoy my paintings. So that's not the reason why I'm not on Facebook. I think older people on Facebook, no, older people on Instagram are some of the like, the nicest people that are there. There's one guy, this Gary from Texas, and he's one of the uh, my oldest friends. And, and by oldest, I mean a person that I've known for the longer, longer time. And he's like older than the YouTube crowd. I'm not gonna say that he's old. <laughs> Time is really running away from me. I have so much to do. What is my deepest blue? This one. Is it good enough for this palette? Maybe this. Maybe I don't need to go darker than this. I'm using the pen sideways so that I can get more of this texture of this uh, Polar's ice cream brush. If you don't use it sideways, you don't get this uh, texture out. I'm gonna <laughs> take a look at the chat. Uh, how can I practice the fundamentals in a style that I'm not used to? Just do it. I've been practicing planes of the head. Very good practice. You can never do too many planes of the head. I should do more of planers of the head. Values. One of my goals is uh, make splash art for video games. What is splash art? What is plus art for video games? Is it like when people are having a dialogue and then they have like these 2D elements? I don't know. Sure, 
Jordi character looks like he's contemplating. That is true. <laughs> been dealing with art block for a couple of days now. Watching your live streams gives me strength, so I just started a painting and I'm finally genuinely enjoying it. Thank you so much. Remember to finish it. Also, don't wait for an inspiration before you start a painting. Just start a painting. Like manually just put colors on a canvas and then pick another color and see what happens. Nobody fails a ink blot test. Tadarik Devin is saying, keep it up. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Hamikko, I love your colorful vibrant paintings. I have never used color before. Do you have any idea? Do you have any advice on how to begin? Begin with color. I highly recommend beginning a painting with color. You can... It's an old video, but I highly recommend watching my other video called Analogous Colors and there's this exercise in it. Do that exercise and do it for every color. Then you have learned color. It's pretty simple. I think splash art is like for loading screens. Okay, I just didn't know that. I've done loading screens and games for 10 years, but haven't just heard that term. Hello to India. Good night to the person going to sleep. Okay, more painting. Wow, I need to this situation up. This music is not helping. Dear Lord, make it stop. Okay. Much better. Also, when you're learning color, you can do pixel art. I think that might be fun to kind of like limit the options a little bit so you can do more focused learning. You always have to uh, keep listening to like what I'm actually feel like doing because uh, if an exercise feels so daunting that you don't actually do it then literally any other exercise would be better and more useful. If you read some instructions online and somebody is advising you to do something that you know that you're just not in the mood to do ever, then that is not good advice for you. So try to listen to yourself and see what actually motivates you, what you want to accomplish and do. And when you're making art, try to listen to yourself and feel like what you actually like doing instead of like what do you want to do because that's much harder to notice and much more useful. To finding your style and finding the enjoyment in art.
What are your brush settings? Oh, <laughs> that's a lot of settings. I guess in my brush set, if you look at most of them, they have kind of a same profile. That's because uh, I think a brush needs to have control. This one has quite a lot of texture, so the grain is affecting it a lot too. But it's also very sensitive to the angle. If we watch this close, you can probably see it. Now I'm like doing it in an angle and it's very different and it blends a bit when it's at an angle. Do you exclusively use your brushes for painters back for your paintings or do you find yourself still using some stock brushes to... I don't know what you mean by stock brushes, do you mean default brushes? Because my last illustration that I made on the phone that is completely made with default brushes But my own set has been like uh, formulated over the course of hundreds of paintings, so it answers the kind of needs that I have for a process. If I would have the opportunity, I would love to like make one brass for Procreate so that they could put it into one of their releases. I think that would be super awesome because there isn't that like pain, painting brush in the set that I would like there to be. So it would be awesome to say that like don't buy my process there's already like a brass that is super awesome in Procreate. I mean I would definitely do that for free if they asked. And I'm good at making process, so they should ask. I've been making Photoshop process for many years, but I think I kind of like uh, Brush Studio in Procreate a little bit more, it's still a bit harder to get grips with because there are more options, but I think in the end you can do more organic looking process. Especially the bleeding mechanics, they don't work the same way in Photoshop.
Hi Mikko, do you recommend using many different brushes or using limited brushes? I only use one brush per painting. Been doing that for years now. Especially if you're learning art. And I wouldn't go around and tell to professional artists that you should use only one brush. If they feel like using 30 brushes for them is the better way to make art and they get faster work done that way. Especially if you're doing like concept art and you need to like just crank out uh, concepts rather than illustrations in a quick uh, fashion then like go for it. But if you are learning art and you haven't learned for example brush rhythm yet, then I would definitely slap away all of the extra brushes from your set. I would probably come to your iPad and delete all the brushes and like leave you with only the round brush. Because if you really want to learn a painting in a faster way, then you should stop switching brushes all the time and then just like focus on what you are doing with that one brush that you have and make sure that that brush is one that you can uh, use to uh, communicate uh, brush rhythm and volume of the shapes and so on. Is that too harsh? <laughs> I kind of clashed with one uh, school that I was teaching in because I really wanted to like force them to use only one brush and then the board was like you can't go that strict you need to kind of like give them a bit more freedom and I was like the point here is to learn <laughs> but, I don't know Especially students get like way too excited about different brushes. Actually this blending is making everything worse, so I'm going to backtrack here. My usual method of painting clouds doesn't work for this style. What I already have I think looks much better than what I was attempting to do. Like these chunky blocky shapes, I think they work much better for this style than trying to blend them away. Who is your favorite singer? That's a tough question. Oh, like singing voice? There's so many. Somebody saying thank you. That's um, Declan is saying. 
Thank you, that's what I thought. I started with traditional drawing and painting and loved it that way, but seeing people using brushes in many fancy way made me question if I should only use one. Well, I have many oil painting brushes, but they are basically all the same one. They are just different, so I can switch different colors quicker because I am very lazy at like washing brushes. So I just rather had like one stack of the same brush and then wash them all after. I haven't been painting with oils in a while now. Anyway, like my point is that if I don't need different brushes with oils, then I don't need different process with uh, digital art and it's uh, distracting in the learning process because for example especially if you are using process that have for example fake tex textures like for example rock texture brush or water brush then you don't actually learn how to paint rock in a way that would benefit that image in that section of the image. So, if, if the point is to learn, then I don't recommend it. But you can do whatever. Just because I don't recommend it doesn't mean that you can't do it. maybe thinking about like what are your priorities like for example some people say that like I would like to learn to paint with colors also I want to start a painting with a black and white underpainting then there's my limit then I say that like which is it yeah like, I can teach you one of those two methods but like you can't have both choose Would you go for new iPad Air or new older iPad Pro to do these projects? Uh, my guide for like buying hardware for especially considering iPads. When it comes to Procreate, the latest iPad is always the best one to choose. But if you want to save money, the timing matters so if you, for example if you want to buy the latest ipad then usually this time of the year is the best time uh, right after the ipads get released then the older ones get a bit cheaper during that time frame when the shops want to get rid of their stock so those are good and new ipads but they are just a little bit cheaper during that time frame. I need to leave the tab open and like get back to these tracks and save them into a playlist or something. There has been so many that I really like that I haven't heard before. Like that one, I really like that one.
I'm gonna make an edge to this uh, pool area by... What am I going to do? So the one that is on the top needs to be lower. So I'm gonna select that and then just tap here a few times. You probably can't even see it because it's lowering so slowly. And then I'm gonna have this kept in the alpha lock mode and then just paint the edge this way. I think Vivi is having some kind of a dream because she's making these sounds. She doesn't make those sounds when she's awake. set this as a glitting mask and then lower the opacity and then try to find a darker version of these clouds keep it very low in saturation Mikko, I'm studying architecture in India. That sounds super cool. Lots of cool architecture in India already. And use your style of illustrations for my concepts to show my faculties. <laughs> That's amazing. I'd love to see them.
I can't read the chat all the time. That's all I'm saying. Mikko, do you recommend to paint first in black and white and then with colors? The same painting. I don't recommend painting with black and white. If you need to check the values, use the power button trick. It's only two minutes to learn that. And that's a video on my channel. It's very short and it will change the way that you paint. Do that. these things down. usually say it like out loud but sometimes there are people in the chat that like repeatedly ask the same question and I think it's like adding more volume to the chat than is necessary and that is making it harder for me to catch up so when I notice that somebody is like asking the same question again and again then I just don't <laughs> respond to those questions because there's only a limited amount of questions that I can answer in the first place so I try to uh, not encourage people to spam because if everybody just gets their way that way then everybody would just be spamming all the time and I, I don't think that would be uh, good for the other people following the conversation I don't know if that makes sense, but at least if I think about the consequences, then to me that makes sense. I'm already going to be running so long on this. I know that the time limit is approaching, but I have stuff to do. <laughs> so this is kind of exceptional. But I want these paintings, like the goal of these is not to have the painting finished, but I want them to be finished enough so that like when people see the finished piece on my Twitter or Instagram that it's not a completely different painting or that I went into some sort of like strange direction with the rest of that painting. I kind of want to have like all of them, like the main uh, design decisions done. That's my goal with this. Because like I have said many times, the color edit that I wouldn't even be able to do on a live stream except if I start a painting from that phase where I do the color edit. 
which I think would be interesting, but like that would require a situation where I am able to plan better and announce when the live stream is happening. I need a trunk color for this. So I'm gonna see if any of these work. I usually don't use brown or trunk because it's close to the green, so usually it's just desaturated green. Already looks um, brown enough. So maybe I could just uh, use this. I don't want to cut with the um, edge of that cloud in the background. I'm going to make this entire tree hang from this stone pillar. Way too many cloud layers for me to handle when it comes to layer management. Where is this layer? I can't even see this. Maybe it's a layer that I'm not even using, so this I can get rid of. Maybe combine these two. I can deal with that later. nothing on this one so now I can afford to do a layer mask <laughs> as a clipping mask Thank you. 
how many caps do I have? <laughs> this is the most important question. Uh, many? <laughs> so many of these have these sort of like um, attachment things that I don't usually use on these streams. But I have a massive head. I might be short, but I have a huge, huge head. So all the caps that I have bought, they are just the ones that fit me. <laughs> There's no style consideration at all. It's just if the cap fits me, then I need to buy it. Because there's not going to be a next one soon. That feels that criteria. Because he's so angry. <laughs> That's why the channel is called Angry Mikko. Yep. You got it. That's the reason. I think this is a potential way that I can use to kind of push the colors later with an overlay layer. And only because the saturation and um, contrast is so low that gives me option to do it. To be fair, he's the only Mikko I've ever met. <laughs> you should come to Finland. There's plenty of us in here. I could just be Mikko of Finland, but it would seem like a kind of reusing of an old naming convention.
Dude, I feel that I'm short and have a massive skull. <laughs> With a big headed unite. Whoa. There's a massive branch. The terrible branch. Okay. That makes more sense. Do you have a preference between 11 and 12 inch iPad Pro? You should watch my previous video. This was exactly the topic in that video. So it's a short one. Because I was sick. Also, if anybody has watched this video this far, I can tell you this thing that... So when I was filming my previous video, I had a fever. And I had been having that fever for almost a week at that point, so I thought like, this is not going to get any better, I'm going to need to make a video, otherwise I might as well quit YouTube completely. So I recorded that sound, and then I, when I was like editing the sound, I was recording it with this uh, Blue Yeti mic, and Blue Yeti, because it's a condenser microphone, it just picks up everything, and there was so much stuff to edit and I just felt not just the sound but the tone was a bit wrong so I thought that I can say this in a shorter way and be a bit more helpful so I shot the video three times the first time was a complete disaster and the second time was the one that you see uh, in that video and the third time that I completely scrap because after I was done Going through the talk, I realized that I'm just like melting <laughs> on the chair because I just felt like I need to lie down and have a nap afterwards. And you can see in that video that my hair, it, that's a good uh, sign that like I'm really kind of like super... Um, sick still and have a fever because my hair is all clumped together and that's something that I wasn't able to fix with any type of editing. Uh, my kiddo wants to help you paint again. She's touching color picker and saying uh, baby painting. <laughs> you should let your kid choose the colors and then just paint with those. I think that would be a fun challenge. Oh. Let's flip this.
<laughs> this is a funny question, I need to read this. How your life is changed after this much fame? <laughs> no, there's no fame on the internet, especially considering my art. How is your pressure curve in Procreate? I guess I could show it to you. It's been ages since I want to look at it. Uh, preferences? This is how it looks. I'm a very light uh, painter, so... Depends on like if you tend to have like a death grip on your stylus and scrape it against the screen, then your curve should be like this. But if you're a very light painter, then it should be like a concave shape. Basically, you want to kind of like take advantage of all the different. Um, pressure levels in your normal brush strokes. So if all of your brush strokes are super light, then you will never get the full opacity in uh, brushes that have opacity set to pressure. Enzo Blossom says, I'm super heavy handed, kinda surprised I haven't showed my <sighs> showed my I Apple Pencil through iPad. Yeah, then you should probably do the opposite than I do with the pressure curve. To kind of protect your arm, because I used to have a death grip and you can kind of develop serious problems that way. It's no joke.
the queen of the house is waking up, so I have to go soon. Pressure curve is the best thing that you can do to just like change the way that you paint. I recommend that you do that first. And if that doesn't help, then set yourself like timer reminders that every time a timer goes off, like you have to check that if you're like gripping the pen too hard. Now finally I have a color for this like um, older green. I'm gonna get rid of one of these colors. Let's pick uh, this one. That's the colder green. I'm pretty happy with this palette. Like before I share it, I'm going to um, arrange it in a way that makes sense. You don't have to color pick it in a way that I have arranged it, but just to make it easier for people to use, I'm going to switch around them. Usually I arrange the same colors next to each other, so that I can easily see by looking at the color palette where the uh, local colors are and where are the shadows and highlights of those colors in that atmosphere. Wow, my voice is dying. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's there's nothing that I can do about it. I can hear her chewing something, maybe a piece of furniture. When you're a corgi, then everything can be a snack.
Do you plan to ever make a Discord? Well, never say never, I guess. I've used Discord for the concept art classes that I have taught. So, good thing about it is that students can share their paintings. So when I have feedback sessions, I go through the Discord chat and then just see what everybody has posted. When you're running like several different social media uh, channels at the same time, you have to at some point think that like, what can I do in a way that is actually adding value to the people that are following me? Or when you are just like copy pasting the same stuff to different channels. At some point I just had so much work that I had to cut out certain things from my workflow of posting art to different sites. There are some websites that I would like to get back to, to posting art. Now that I have more time. I said earlier that I'm gonna add some stones here and I'm going to do that. I think it's going to add more life to this. She's now playing with uh, the biggest bone that she has, which is like the deluxe version of bones. I can hear it just from the sound. Also, I can see her. <laughs> It's funny, when you have a dog, you end up kind of like noticing certain patterns in sounds in a different way. Like for example, we have a wooden floor here, 
that's the reason why sometimes in my videos there is now a bit more echo because sound panels are really expensive and I, that's something that I'm going to invest in this channel when I can afford it. But right now we don't have carpets on the floors so there's a lot more echo everywhere. Anyway, because of the wooden floor I can hear the way that she's walking around and I can hear from the rhythm of her paw steps when she's doing something that she's not supposed to be doing. <laughs> Without even actually seeing her. This is the most lovely sound when she's just playing by herself. It's nice that she looks like she's enjoying herself when she can like do all kinds of different things with different toys and her favorite toy without any competition. So I have this tripod that I bought and you can probably see that I'm carrying it in that uh, plain air video, that tripod bag. So that bag of this tripod is her favorite thing. Like we have so many different toys for her, but this bag is the most exciting thing. Like all the expensive toys and treats, like they are no match for the tripod bag. She carries it around and it's like three times her size. And she looks so completely like out of reach for any type of like normal commands when she goes into that sort of like complete dognado mode. Okay, uh, I'm gonna need to stop soon, but I just have one idea that I want to show that I might include later. I think it would be cool if some of these like lower platforms just had some plans for scale as well. But obviously I'm gonna change the views for this. Okay, I don't know. There's something about this that I like. It's a strange, strange place. I think for me a painting is successful when I, I look at it and it makes me smile. I 
don't need to see if like other people like it on Instagram or if this video gets lots of views or none. But if I like it, then that that's worth something, right? I mean, it, it sounds like big words, but like it's making me happier, like right now in this moment. And I think that's the thing that I want people to know is like instead of like what they want to do and what they wanted their painting to be is like when those moments happen that when you actually like your painting or when you like what you're doing, just the act of doing it and noticing it, it like it's a really hard skill to learn but so worth it and you will thank yourself later for going through the effort noticing those moments now i really need to go it sounds like something is being broken <laughs> oh. it's the best dog no wait it's just a big bone it's just so huge that it makes this whole noise Do you ever steal textures from photographs to incorporate into your paintings? <sighs> Depends on the commission. I mean, like, I would do that for a commission, yes. Uh, when I was working on this movie last year, that style needed, like, actual photo references a lot and realistic textures, so there was, like, wood and other textures, rock also, that I used for the concept pieces, but I don't like, like to do photo bashing for these sort of situations, only for like concepting purposes. A concept is not an illustration, it's for the production, production of something. When a production company asks me that like, can you imagine what this vehicle or place would look like and we need that answer in three days. So then they are paying for me to come up with that idea quickly and it's the idea that they pay for. They don't pay for the illustration because the illustration is going to be not seen by anybody except like the production stuff, staff. They need to know what they are going for if they do like CG or prop design. So that is a concept image. Like most people when they think about concept art, they think about promotional material and that is not concept art. If you see for example art on the box cover of a game, that is not concept art, that is um, promotional material. It's completely different. Okay, <laughs> uh, I need to go, uh, I need to take her out and make sure that she's okay. Thank you for everybody for joining this live stream and I'm happy to be back painting with you guys. And I will arrange the palette uh, for the next live stream. So if you want to paint with me, I will paint with this palette that I made during this live stream. And if you want to paint, you can paint with the same colors. Just keep an eye on the story. I'm trying not to like spam my story with like useless stuff, even though I like doing that. But when I announce the next live stream, I will also share the palette there. So if you want to paint with these colors, you can do that. Okay, uh, see you next time, guys. <laughs>